Well, hello and welcome again to Word for the Week, our online book study series here at Cornerstone Faith Community Church. My name is Pastor Jeremy, and I am uh, happy to be with you as we continue our look through the book, um, The Prayer of Agar, by J. Payleitner. Um, we are today uh, looking at two more of the lists that um, Payleitner um presents to us in the book we're on page uh we're starting on page 56 today um list number two <clears throat> list number two uh discusses what Payleitner calls amazing enigmas um he talks about how he just simply can't uh agar talks about how he simply can't understand things like how an eagle flies through the sky or a snake uh, slithers on the ground, um, the way that a ship can stay um, afloat in the sea. Um, and then he says he, he can't understand the way of a man with a young woman. Uh, we'll talk about those in just a moment, but list two is about sort of the, the these enigmas, these natural world things that happen that, um, that Agar just can't seem to get his mind wrapped around. List number three talks about human mistakes. So we've talked about a lot of natural world things uh, related to creation and other kinds of things, but now we're talking about humans. Um, and so Agar brings up the the problems of human mistakes, things like um, inexperienced people being given too much power and authority, um, the idea that of gluttony, of, of just having this laziness towards uh, getting things that they should be given to, to you. Um, he talks about how love wins, and the reality of this is that sometimes uh, we as humans forget the importance of love, and we we cheat ourselves when we forget about the importance of true love. Um, and then he talks about how adultery destroys. So these two lists are sort of uh, focused around problems, I would say. And I wanted to focus in on uh, something that I think draws both of the lists together. In um, in the second list on uh, on page fifty eight, um, Payleitner says this by highlighting these enigmas, these these four things in the world he can't understand: the how the eagle flies, the snake slithers, the um, the the ship stays afloat on the sea, and 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 basically love. By highlighting these four en enigmas. Agar confirms that God has an all-encompassing, well-ordered design for our world that the human mind cannot grasp. We should not expect to understand God, and we can trust that his plan for our lives is far better than we could ever imagine. P. Leitner began this list by saying God's ways are beyond our human imagination, and that's just the way it should be. Now, in the next list which starts on on page 59 <clears throat> we, we heard about how experience matters gluttony kills love wins adultery destroys and then at the end of that chapter page 62 it says if your choices align with God's perfect plan when it comes to climbing social ranks earning your daily bread marrying for love keeping the marriage bed pure well done but thinking back to the overarching lesson of Agar's prayer your ongoing assignment is to consider how your own areas of weakness uh, impact your life and then find your sweet spot, build your foundation on a solid biblical footing. So what brings these two lists together, the problems of, of human mistakes and the difficulty of understanding how things work in our world? It's, it's frankly, quite simply this. Um, there is probably nothing in all of created order that we truly 100% understand. Um, so let me give the example of uh, when you're in elementary school, okay? You're in elementary school and um, <clears throat> your, your, your teacher is teaching you that um, when you multiply four by two, you get eight. Four times two is eight, right? Okay, so in order to prove that to you, um, your your teacher gives you uh, four red buttons. And then we're multiplying four times two, right, to get eight. So we get four red buttons, and then 
um, she gives us another set of four red buttons. And so over here, we have four red buttons, and over here, we have four red buttons. And we can count them, right? And we can say we have four and four, so that's two groups of four, or four times two. So now we can count them individually and know that they make eight, right? Uh, so we can understand that. We understand fully, we would say, that four times two equals eight, because if I take two groups of four and I put them together, I end up with eight. There's a proof to that that we understood. But when it comes to the diff more difficult things of this world, these, these ideas of, of enigmas, okay? Um, how, do, how do eagles fly? Okay, if you want to know how an eagle flies, you just go out and Google it, and I'm certain you will find all about how the aerodynamics of the feathers work and, and how they soar through the air and you know all these other kinds of things. But at the end of the day, no one can say to you in the same way we came with four times two is e equals eight, here is um, exactly 100% um, how this works uh, without you necessarily needing to just accept something. Maybe an eagle is a difficult um, solution, but it was certainly what Agar would have known. I would say in our, our modern world, we could use an airplane. Okay, now certainly scientists, um, pilots, understand how airplanes fly and stay in the, uh, the air while they're flying. But my wife says, and I would have to agree with her, when, when you look up in the air and you see a, a plane flying through the air, okay, the science is there. We know how rocket propulsion works and, you know, the wings and the, all this jazz. But I still look up there and go, why doesn't it fall? I don't, I don't fully understand this. I accept the fact that there's some science involved here. There's, there's things that happen, but I still don't understand it. And we could go through a myriad of things in our life that have the same kind of situation. For example, Agar says, love. The, how, how a young man interacts with a young woman. Marriage, sex, however you want to look at it. There's a lot there that we truly don't understand. We know social norms when it comes to love. We know cultural norms when it comes to love. We know what our families expect. We know what um, the people that we're dating expect. You know, we know all the expectations, that kind of stuff. But when it comes to love, do we really truly 100% understand love? No, I think it's something that exists. And when love meets up with our sort of predisposed con conceptions about what it's supposed to be, we say it makes sense. But even that, it still truly kind of doesn't make sense. I mean, think about it. You have a spouse, and out of all of the other people in the world, you choose that one. Now, you chose that one because you met every other person in the world and you said, no, thank you? No, of course not. You see what I'm saying? We don't quite understand. There's something at work. We don't quite understand the why. Uh, a couple days ago, my family was watching a show on TV about um, uh, animals and uh, nature, and uh, and it was all about um, animals, plants, and animals that um, change colors, that use color to hide themselves or whatever the case might be. And so, um, it started out by talking about tigers, <clears throat> and tigers are obviously orange and black. We know that, right? Um, uh, but what I didn't know is that um, the interesting thing about being orange and black is that to us, we would say, well, that's not camouflage because, you know, when it's walking through a bunch of trees, the orange and the black is going to stick out. You're going to see them. However, its main source of food, the thing that it preys on the most, is a particular kind of deer. And most all deer in the world no matter where you find a deer, have the same kind of eye uh, situation, uh, how, they, how they process colors. And what's interesting is that their eyes cannot process red, yellow, or orange. So everything that they see looks kind of green, which is helpful for the tiger because their stripes are orange. So what ends up happening is that in and amongst all these trees is a tiger that is black and orange but when the deer sees it it looks black and green kind of more like camouflage 
and they can't distinguish these tigers from the trees. I look at that and I go, amazing, incredible, okay? And I would argue that that is such an incredible proof that God is creator of all things, that God is at work when he creates things because of the simple fact that how would we as humans ever come to know that uh, that this deer over here removes red and orange from its eyesight, like it can't see it, so when we're going to make something, you know, I mean, we would never know, that I can't understand that. That's where Agar is coming from with this thing about the eagles and, and so forth. There is so much in our natural world we can't understand. Let me tell you one other thing I think we can't understand. At the end of the third list, Paleitner said, if your choices align with God's perfect plan, when it comes to climbing social ranks, earning daily bread, marrying for love, keeping marriage bed pure, well done. If your life aligns, if your choices align with God's perfect will. I don't understand God's perfect will. I simply don't. I trust it. I know that he has a perfect will for my life. I trust it. I accept it. And I, and I strive to live it. But I don't understand it. There's many things in my life that have happened that I go, what, why, why is this? But I just trust that when I'm led to a certain decision, for example, when I've prayerfully considered something and I feel um, what you call that discernment, I'm led to, a, 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 I'm discerning a certain decision. Uh, I trust that that's bringing me closer in line with God's plan. And I also trust that if I've, if I've misunderstood or if I've um, made the wrong decision, God will make that clear to me and he will use that in order to bring me closer to him. So there's a lot I don't understand about God's perfect will for my life, but yet I trust it. I don't understand how the eagle stays up in the sky, but I can look up there and see that he's, he's doing that. I trust that he's going to stay up there. I, I can look on the ground and see a snake go slithering by, and I trust that that snake is going to slither by. I don't understand it, right? Uh, there's so much about our God that we struggle to understand. So how does this apply to life in the sweet spot? I think when it comes to the things of God that are difficult to understand, whether it's about God, about nature, about his creation, about love, about whatever, when it comes to those moments, folks far too often say, that's too hard to understand. That's impossible to understand. Therefore, it can't make sense. It's illogical. Uh, it's irrational to trust it or believe it. And so they throw the whole thing out because they can't understand this one thing. If I gave up on God every time I came to a part of his word that I didn't fully 100% understand I would have given up on him a long time ago it happens all the time now there are great examples in my life where I've come back to those same spots that I didn't understand in his word at some other point and I go oh well now that I know this that makes a lot more sense there are still plenty of things in his word that I don't understand so the sweet spot for all of us really with God is when we can come to a place where we've gained the knowledge of him we need to fully accept him and trust him. But within that acceptance and trust, we've reached a point where we can trust and accept him without fully 100% understanding everything there is to know about him. I believe what Pei Leitner says in this book is true. I believe God has this plan for each and every one of us. It's a good plan. It's a great plan. It's the best plan. It's not the easiest plan. It's not the most rational plan. It's not the most understandable plan always, but God has a plan and he's working it out. And sometimes, yes, we're going to sit back and go, really, God? Like, there's probably an easier way to do this. 
I want to find myself in line with His will for my life. In order to do that, I'm going to have to be willing to accept moments with Him that I don't understand. And if I don't accept those moments that I don't understand, that's what leads to these human mistakes. Uh, Edgar talks about adultery. What leads us there? When we misunderstand what love is. When we call love pleasure. If love is nothing more than pleasure ever, then yeah, we're going to get we're going to be led to adultery because at some point life with the person you love isn't always pleasurable. But we trust in love. We trust that God has linked us up with this person for our mutual edification. And so to bring this all to a close, looking for that sweet spot with God, I'm going to have to at some point be able to trust and accept God, his plan for my life, and everything he has told me without having 100% full understanding of who he is. That's faith. Faith is the evidence of those things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. We will one day fully understand. But for now, at some point it's going to have to be okay for me to trust without fully understanding. I hope you have a great week this week. I look forward to the last two uh, lists, uh, four and five, uh, with you uh, as we meet together next week. Have a great week, everybody.